A number of people have come to me recently with similar stories relevant to prevention of heart disease. Sadly, there's so much misinformation that dates back over 50 years that has essentially brainwashed both the public as well as my colleagues, physicians, such that they deliver a message that does not prevent heart disease, heart attack, sudden cardiac death, need for heart procedures. Let me tell you about one of these stories. It's a friend of mine who came to me because his wife, age 62, had a CT heart scan for a coronary artery calcium score. So recall that coronary calcium scores are a way to gauge just how much atherosclerotic plaque you have in your coronary arteries. Because years ago, my friend, Dr. John Rumberger, while at Mayo Clinic, did an autopsy study where he studied the coronary arteries of people who had died from a variety of causes, car accidents, other traumatic injuries, etc., cancer. And he found that the, regardless of the cause of death, regardless of age, regardless of sex, that 20%, 20% of all atherosclerotic plaque volume was occupied by calcium. It was very consistent, such that let's say you had two cubic millimeters of calcium, you knew you had 10 cubic milliliters of atherosclerotic plaque. We now know with many years of evidence that it's the volume of atherosclerosis lining your arteries, it could be coronary, it could be carotid, it could be others, is a predictor of bad things. That is plaque rupture and heart attack, sudden cardiac death, and those kinds of things. So this woman had a CT heart scan and her coronary calcium score is 342. Well, he's my friend, so I said, let's talk to you and your wife, and let's talk about how to put a stop to this. And I, I educated them that if she did nothing, which is not wise, right, her score would increase by 25% per year. So within about six to seven years, she would die, have a heart attack, or develop symptoms necessitating such things as stent implantation or bypass surgery. So she had six to seven years to sort this out. So I, I showed the, this couple how she needed to follow the diet that uh, eliminates the expression of the primary driver of heart disease, small LDL, small dense LDL particles. And you do that by eliminating wheat, grains, and sugars. She needed to correct her vitamin D, that's a major player in calcium metabolism, obtain a, a good dose of omega-3 fatty acids, correct her iodine deficiency and her magnesium deficiency, which is ubiquitous, in modern people, and then address her microbiome. Because if she had coronary disease, it's virtually guaranteed that she had SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and endotoxemia. Now, endotoxemia, we now know, is a major cardiovascular risk factor and especially a risk, a provoker of plaque rupture. That's what causes heart attacks. It's not the progressive worsening of blockage, it's the sudden worsening of blockage because of plaque rupture. It's like a little pimple or a volcano. And when the underlying tissues of that plaque are exposed to blood flow, it causes blood clots. And so she was six to seven years or so away from that kind of event. And so she needed to address all those factors. Unfortunately, she talked to her conventional cardiologist and he said, oh, that's nonsense. You just need to take a baby aspirin, a statin drug like Lipitor, cut the saturated fat in your diet, consider becoming a vegetarian, and exercising. We know, with good evidence, dating back over 30 years, 30 years, we helped contribute these, these data, that that formula, baby aspirin, statin cholesterol drug, reducing saturated fat, etc., does not work. So if this woman did nothing, her score would increase 25% per year, and then, of course, six to seven years, something bad happens. If she takes a baby aspirin, a statin cholesterol drug at high dose and reduces her LDL cholesterol to very low levels, reduces saturated fat and total fat, exercise, what will, how fast will her calcium score increase? 25% per year, it has no impact whatsoever. Well, the objection that she and her uh, husband raised was that, okay, I have this calcium score, but my cholesterol is good. In other words, they thought that cholesterol somehow superseded or trumped the calcium score. So let's make that clear. 
Cholesterol is not a measure of disease. It's a crude, indirect index of risk, of potential for disease. And it's a very lousy mark, by the way. It's not even clear. Even to this day, after many decades of, of a debate, it's not even clear that total or LDL cholesterol is truly a reliable predictor of heart disease. So if I told you her total cholesterol, let's say, was 260 milligrams, or LDL cholesterol was 180 milligrams, whatever, is she going to have a heart attack tomorrow, next Tuesday, next month, next year, 10 years from now? Never. You don't know. You can't tell. It's not a measure of the disease. It's a crude, indirect index of potential risk. The calcium score, on the other hand, is a measure of the disease. If you know she had a score of 342 calcium score, you know she has tons of coronary atherosclerotic plaque just waiting for an opportunity to rupture, cause heart attack, or other catastrophes. So she has a choice. Follow the index of the disease or follow an indirect index of risk, of potential risk for disease. Sadly, they chose the latter. They did at least run some of the blood tests I suggested, like NMR lipoproteins and other things. It turned out she, was, she had lots of small LDL particles, as you'd expect, something like 1,800 nanomoles per liter, which is bad. She was also, had a genetic pattern called lipoprotein A, which means that despite being slender and fit and active, that a diet low in fat and cholesterol and rich in healthy whole grains or a vegetarian diet is lethal to that genetic pattern because it causes the overexpression of small LDL, triglycerides, insulin resistance, and inflammation. So we don't know what's become of her because she went the, uh, the, the wrong way, even though she was given the ticket to complete and full control over the progression of her coronary calcium score. My point here is this. Don't say something like this to yourself. Oh, my calcium score is such and such, but my cholesterol is good. I'm therefore okay. Those two have nothing to do with each other. A calcium score, an index of disease, cholesterol, index of almost nothing, and at best, a poor predictor of, of risk. So if you have a coronary calcium score of whatever, 200, 300, 1,000, identify the causes. And you do so by just running some basic laboratory values, such as an NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance imaging, NMR lipoprotein panel. And the first time you run it, add a lipoprotein A. If you don't have it, you never have to run that lipoprotein A again because it's genetic. You, don't have, you can't acquire it. If you have it, you still don't need to run it again because we do not try to reduce it. We just accommodate it and make some adjustments to the program, such as high dose fish oil. We currently use 6,000 milligrams EPA DHA, and that has worked incredibly well. But if you have a coronary calcium score or have coronary disease by some other measure, NMR lipoproteins, first time run it with a lipoprotein A. We run factors relevant to blood glucose and insulin, such as in hemoglobin A1C, fasting glucose, fasting insulin. It helps know your vitamin D status with a 25 hydroxy vitamin D. You need to know your thyroid status. Thyroid disease is rampant, out of control. A third of this country, a third of the people in this country have thyroid disease or will have thyroid disease in a variety of forms, most commonly Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's followed by hypothyroidism. So you need a TSH, a free T3, free T4, thyroid antibodies, and ideally a reverse T3, and then you deal with it. And that's a whole other conversation, of course. Know that if you have a coronary calcium score, that is a measure of disease. It is the most important thing you can do to get a grip on your cardiovascular risk. Now, if you get, learn something from this video, I invite you to see my other YouTube videos, my Defiant Health podcasts, you can find any podcast directory, the thousands of blog posts I have in my WilliamDavisMD.com blog. And if you desire some kind of support, guidance, conversation, I invite you to join my conversations that we have with uh, regularly on my inner circle.drdavisinfinitehealth.com.